Blackie? Shorty, how are you? When'd you get back in town? About an hour ago. I was going to call you from the station, but all the phones were busy. Well, where are you now, Shorty? I'm in Delaney's Drug Store on the corner of Sunset Parkway and Oak Lane. Well, say, that's not far from here. Grab a cab and come on up. I'll bring you up to date on what's happened since you've been gone. You all right, Shorty? Sure, boss. I've gone straight. I'm going to go straight. <laughs> well, go straight out of that drug store, get straight into a cab, and come straight up here to my apartment. I will. Be seeing you, boss. So long. Help me, help me, I saw it, I saw it Hey, help. hey, lady, lady, let go of me, I don't know you I saw it, I saw it You saw what, lady? Oh, I saw a ghost, I saw a ghost and came right after me in that whole fast Get the police, get the police No, no, you're, you're talking to the wrong guy, but get the police, lady You better get back in the house No, 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 I won't go back in the house, not ever, I saw a ghost help you, lady, but I know a guy who can. I'll take you to Boston Blackie and let him take it from there. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> Blackie, what do you figure? Is this dame on the level about seeing a ghost? I don't know, Shorty, but I'm glad you brought her up to my apartment. She's hysterical enough to need medical attention. Gosh, she sure is, boss. Will Miss Wesley fix her up okay again? I hope so. She said she'd be right over and have a look at her. This gal really thinks she saw a ghost, huh, boss? Yeah, she does. Which house did you say she came out of, Shorty? That great big joint, right, right next to Delaney's drugstore. Oh, yeah, I know the place. Wealthy old woman. They're alone, too. I think her name is, uh, Worthington. Who's this ghost-seeing dame, Blackie? Obviously, Mrs. Worthington's maid. She's wearing a maid's apron under her oh. coat. Oh, at last, there's Mary. Come in! Hello, Blackie. Hello, Mary. Hi, Miss Wesley. Hello, Shorty. Oh, welcome back. Gee, thanks. Uh, save all that for later, will you? Take a look at our patient here, Mary, and make some use of your training as a nurse, will you? Well, I'll do my best. Golly, she looks as if she's had a terrible scare. She has had a scare. She thinks she saw a ghost. A, a, a ghost? Yeah, Miss Wesley. She came screaming out of the Worthington mansion and down the street like a ghost was chasing after her with a pitchfork. Well, I don't believe in ghosts, Shorty, but whatever this girl saw, I think she saw. She's certainly frightened. I think we better put her to bed. Here? Just, just for a little while, Blackie. Until she's rational enough to talk to her. She's really only semi-conscious now. Okay, anything you say. Uh, help me carry her into the bedroom, will you? Uh, Shorty, you help her. Sure. I'm going to call Faraday. I don't believe in ghosts, but something frightened this girl, and maybe we ought to find out what it was. Now, let me carry you, Shorty. Yeah, don't worry, Miss Wesley. I got her. Open the bedroom door, and I'll carry you right in. Right. Hey, for a little thing, she sure is happy. Faraday speaking. Uh, hello, Inspector. This is Blackie. Well, here comes the end of a perfect day. I like that line better when it's sung. But listen, I have a girl here in my apartment who's frightened half to death. What'd she do? Get a good look at you? No. And a ghost. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, a ghost. Faraday, listen, I don't want to well, I'll have... tell you what you don't. You don't have anything to talk to me about. And even if you did, I don't want to listen to you. Goodbye. Faraday, don't be a cluck. Faraday. Did you get Inspector Faraday, huh? Yeah, Shorty, I got him, but he got sore. I guess we'll have to investigate this alone. How's the patient? Miss Wesley's going to put her to bed. Good. We'll leave Mary here with her and go down to the Worthington mansion together and see what's what. Okay. Miss Wesley got her to talk a little, Blackie. Her name's Madeline. And you were right, boss. She is the maid in old lady Worthington's joint. Oh, uh, Blackie, I... Oh, Mary, everything all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. The minute I got her to bed, she fell asleep. I think she'll be all right when she wakes up. Good. Look, do you mind staying here while Shorty and I go to the Worthington Mansion and find out what frightened our friend Madeline? All right. I'll just sit out here and read till she wakes up. But, darling, be careful at the Worthington house, will you? Just the thought of ghosts terrifies me. Not me, Mary. I'm a member of the Spook of the Month Club. <laughs> Blackie, old lady Worthington sure lives in one swell joint, huh? Not one swell joint, Shorty. Three of them. 
She has this house, a place at Bar Harbor, and a quarter million dollar shack at Palm Beach. <laughs> no wonder nobody else has got any money. She's got it all. <laughs> <laughs> I would... Yes? Mrs. Worthington? Yes? We'd like to talk to you. May we come in? Why, yes, of course. Thank you. Come on, Charlie. Sure. Uh, you gentlemen are here for some special reason. Yes, Mrs. Worthington. Oh, by the way, aren't you the famous concert pianist? Well, I, I was in my younger days. But it's been a, oh, a good 15 years since I was on the concert stage. Has it been that long, really? <laughs> oh, I remember you very well. Oh, why, thank you, uh, um, Mr... Uh... Oh, forgive me. I'm Boston Blackie and this is Shorty. And how do you do, Boston Blackie and Mr. Shorty? Mr. Shorty. Hey, uh, I'm getting up in the world, boss. Mrs. Worthington, I hope we're not imposing on you. Imposing? Well, nonsense. I'm I'm quite alone here and quite happy to have company, especially the famous Boston Blackie. Thank you, Mrs. Worthington. Oh, but uh, forgive me. uh, uh, When I say I'm quite alone, I'm not telling the truth. My maid, Madeline Burns, lives here with me. Uh, But she's out just now. She's out? Like a light. She said she saw a real-life ghost here, lady. Uh... That's why we're here, as a matter of fact, Miss Worthington. We wondered uh, if you... You wondered if I saw the ghost that frightened Madeline? Don't tell me you did. Oh, oh dear me, no. <laughs> Madeline is a very nice girl, but she's not too bright. She's always hearing and seeing things. Well, she's in good hands, and I imagine she'll be all right again in a little while. You're not alone here now, are you, Mrs. Worthington? Yes, I am. Well, perhaps you'd better get someone to stay with you tonight. Oh, no, I'm quite all right alone. I think it would be wiser if you'd get someone over. One of your family, perhaps. I have no family, except for Ernest, my nephew. And I'll be much more comfortable alone with the ghost than with him. <laughs> all right, Mrs. Worthington. We'll get your maid back to you as soon as possible. Oh, well, you needn't worry about rushing her back. There are no ghosts here, except my memories. And they're the kind of ghosts I like. Hello, Mary. Oh. Oh, back so soon, Blackie? Yes, and it's just as I thought. Our friend Madeline Burns has been frightened by one of her own hallucinations. No ghosts, huh? No ghosts. Good, good. Oh, where's Shorty? He'll be up soon. He stopped in the delicatessen for a few things. Hungry? Mm-hmm. And I'm tired, too. I was trying to read while you were gone, but the words began to get fuzzy. A frightened friend cause you any trouble? No. No, she's still asleep, I guess. I haven't been in to see her since you left. I've been sitting out here. Well, let's take a look at her, huh? If she's all right, I'd like to send her back to Mrs. Worthington. Oh, I think she should be all right by now. Wait, I'll open the door. Oh, uh, Blackie, we better go in quietly. I don't think she'd be able to take another scare tonight. You think it's all right to turn on the light? Uh, yeah, I think so. Here, I'll turn it on. Thanks. Um, you think we ought to wake her up? Well, I don't... I don't think it'd do her any harm. Say, why not the window is open in here? The room's awfully stuffy. I thought I'd better keep them closed and locked until she went to sleep. Uh, you know, just, just in case. And then I forgot to come in and open them. Well, I'll open one of them now. Will you wake, wake our frightened beauty? All right. Madeline. Madeline. What's the matter, Mary? Why are you feeling your pulse? I'm not feeling it. Because there isn't any. What? Blackie. This girl is dead. Wow. Mary, uh, you know about these things. Can you tell how she died? No. No, I can't. There doesn't seem to be a mark on it. Well, I don't see how she could have been murdered. You were sitting in the room outside and the windows in here are locked. Yeah, well, she she might have... I'll get the phone, Mary. Don't touch anything in here just yet. And I won't. Don't worry. Hello? This is Mr. Boston Blackie. Yes? This is Mrs. Worthington. Oh, yes, Mrs. Worthington. I have... Mrs. Worthington, if you'll just... Please send Madeline back. I need someone with me to back. Oh, I can't send Madeline back, Mrs. Worthington, but take it easy. I'll get the police down there right away. Oh, no, 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 not, not the police, please. You come, you come, but hurry. I will, I will, Mrs. Worthington. Just be calm. Please, hurry. Oh, I will. Please. Goodbye. What's the matter with Mrs. Worthington? 
talking to him, Blackie? Now, she's seeing ghosts. A, what? Well, she's seeing something. Oh, but not a ghost. That's, uh, that's impossible. I know, but something's going on in that house, and I think it's about time somebody did something. Farley speaking. Uh, Farley, this is Blackie. What, with another ghost story? Not this time. I've got a dead body for you. Oh, killed by a ghost, I suppose. Maybe so. It's here in my apartment. Dead without a mark on it. And in a locked room. What? In your apartment? Yes, and don't say I did it because I didn't. Say where you are, Blackie. I'm coming right out. Look, Faraday, I think you'd better investigate the Worthington home before you come up here. What for? Mrs. Worthington just called me, and she's seeing ghosts. Well, I'm all... Now, look, Blackie, don't bother me about ghosts. Just stay there in your apartment, and don't touch anything. I'll be up there right away. What did he say, Blackie? He said he'd... for us to stay here, so get your hat and coat, Mary... We're going to the Worthington Mansion to find out what it's like to either speak to or spite a spook. And now, back to Boston Blackie. (laughs) Madeline Burns, the maid in the home of Mrs. Worthington, one-time concert pianist, is frightened by what she claims is a ghost. Blackie has the hysterical girl put to bed by his friend Mary Wesley. Then Blackie and his pal Shorty go to the Worthington home to see Mrs. Worthington. The kind old lady informs them that there are no ghosts in her home and that the maid suffers from hallucinations. Blackie turns to see how the maid is getting along and he and Mary find her dead. Mrs. Worthington phones hysterically for Blackie to come to her house and as we return to our story, Blackie and Mary are at her door. Oh, Blackie, maybe Mrs. Worthington isn't home. Well, Mary, we've knocked on the door enough times to be the police. Let's try going in and see. Well, nice try. Hmm. Mary. Listen. That is bad. Oh, sounds like a little child at the piano. Yes, it does. Guess Mrs. Worthington isn't alone after all. The music is coming from in there. Let's go in. Hey, hey, wait for me. I, uh, I just don't want the ghost to think I came here on a ghost. <laughs> Sorry. Gee, we're... whoever's playing that piano certainly has a lot to learn. Yeah, but uh, whoever it is, they'd better. Mary. Look who's at the keyboard. Who? Mrs. Worthington. Mrs. Playing that thing over and over again? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Mrs. Worthington. Um, Mrs. Worthington. Oh. Hello. Mrs. Worthington. We've I'll come to speak to you later. I can't just now. I'm practicing. I play rather well, don't you think? It should be a successful concert. But forgive me, I can't talk anymore. I must practice. Oh, Blackie, listen. Not here, Mary. Come over this way. She's going out of her mind. I know it. And when I saw her a few hours ago, she was as rational as you and I. Blackie, seeing um, something would, would do this to her. Maybe, maybe it was a... Ghost? Yes. Oh, but we don't believe in ghosts. Or do we? I don't know. You tell me. Apparently, Madeline Burns was frightened to death by a ghost. Mrs. Worthington has lost her mind because of a ghost. Maybe. Thank goodness she stopped playing. But look at her, Mary. She's staring at the door as if she sees something. And there's nothing to see. Except maybe a... A ghost? Yes, Mary. And if that door opens for the first time in my life, I hope it's only Faraday. I'll get it, Mary. Hold him. It may be Mrs. Worthington's nephew. You, You called him, didn't you? You know I did. You held my hand so tight I hardly could dial the number. Oh, there she goes again. And here's Faraday. Come in, Inspector. What's going on here, Blanky? You'll find out. 
What about the girl in my apartment? How did she die? Plain case of heart failure. Then that proves it. Proves what? She was frightened to death by a ghost. Sure, she... Are you still yapping about ghosts? I quit believing in ghosts when I was... Hey, who's playing the piano in the other room? Margaret Worthington. The one who used to be a famous concert pianist? Yes. And Faraday, she's completely out of her mind. Crazy? Driven crazy by a ghost. Blanky, one more crack out of you about... Come inside and talk to her. You'll find out for yourself. I sure will. Let's go. Oh, hello, Inspector. Now, Miss Wesley, don't you give me any crazy talk about ghosts. I don't think it'll be very crazy if I do, Inspector. Listen, I... Well, that's the door. I'll get it. And I'll talk to Mrs. Worthington. Uh, Mrs. Worthington. Yes. May I talk to you a minute? Yes. But I'm coming. I'm... Yes. I'm Ernest Cleland, Mrs. Worthington's nephew. Oh yes, thank you for coming over. Come in, will you? Who are you? Boston Blackie. Yeah. What's going on here, anyhow? I don't know. One of the reasons I wanted to see you is that I thought maybe you could tell me. Yeah. What? Who would frighten your aunt's maid to death and pull a stunt that has frightened your aunt out of her mind? The maid's dead. My aunt's out of her mind? Yes, and apparently both because of ghosts. You must be a little out of your mind, too. No, just a little out of my class. I don't know how to fight ghosts. Well, don't look at me. I don't either. I don't want to have anything to do with my aunt because she has nothing to do with me. She kept me out of her will about ten years ago. Now, what's that? Your aunt practicing for the concert she's going to give tonight. Are you kidding? I wish I were. Come on in and have a look at it. Yeah, I want to see this. Mrs. Worthington, please, don't start that all over again. I can't stand it. There's no use trying, Faraday. Huh? No, it's you again. Yes, Faraday, and this is Ernest Cleland, Mrs. Worthington's nephew. How, How do you do, Inspector? Uh, Miss Wesley, Mr. Clinton? How do you do, Mr. Cleland? How do you do, do Miss Wesley? You live here, Cleveland? No, not in this place. It gives me the creeps. Just a minute, Blanky. I'll take that. But it's probably shorty for me. I'll take it just the same. Hello? Inspector Faraday? Yeah? This is Rollins at headquarters. Yeah? I have some information, Inspector. The house Mrs. Worthington lives in is on property that belongs to the Matthews Realty Company. So what? Quit wasting your time, will you? finish, Inspector. The Matthews Realty Company wanted to buy Mrs. Worthington's house. She wouldn't sell. Do you know who owns the Matthews Company? Who? Joe Ghost? No, Charlie Kingston, Boston Blackie's best friend. Uh Uh-oh. Thanks, Rollins. This is beginning to make sense. Bye. Right. All right, Raggy. Come along quietly. Come along? Where? What for? To headquarters. And I'll worry about the charge later. I thought you were at the bottom of this. Your pal Charlie Kingston wants this house. And dreaming up ghosts is your way of getting Mrs. Worthington to sell it. Come on. Oh, Blackie. I said get going, Blackie. Stop nudging me with that gun. I'll go. Stay here with Cleland and Mrs. Worthington, Mary. I'll be back. All right, Inside an hour. Yeah. In an hour, you'll be inside a cell, Blackie. And you have to... Oh, dear, I was afraid this would happen. This fellow Blackie always getting into trouble? Always, Mr. Cleland. And that's always because he's helping others, too. Hmm. That ought to teach him to mind his own business. Uh, Uh, Excuse me, I'll be back soon. There's something I want from upstairs. I left it here the other day. Yes, of course. Mrs. Worthington. Mrs. Worthington. Couldn't you please stop playing those same notes over and over again? I have to practice, my dear. The concert is tonight, you know. Yes, I know, but but if you just... I am the ghost <gasps> of the Worthington house. I heard it. Oh, yes, I heard it, too. Miss Wesley. I am the Worthington house. So where is that voice coming from? I, I can't see anybody. If I don't either, but there is a ghost. This time I hear it. This time I really hear it. I am the invisible ghost. I am around behind in front of this time it's real, it's real. I do hear it, I do hear it. I never should have started this. There really are. Now, 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 Mrs. Worthington. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, she fainted. Mary. Blackie. Blackie. Blackie, where are you? Mary, this is Blackie. Remember everything Mrs. Worthington says or has already said. If she said anything, I'll be right in. Well, all right, but where are you, Blackie? Blackie, I- I've got to revive Mrs. Worthington first. I can't, I can't... Mrs. Worthington. Mrs. Worthington, please, please. Here I am, Mary. What happened to Mrs. Worthington? Oh, she's all right. She, she just fainted, that's all. Well, what did she say when she heard my voice come over the radio set? Your voice come over the radio set? Now, now, just what is this? Well, I left here with Faraday, but as soon as we got outside, I grabbed him, tied him up, and put him under the front steps. Oh, Blackie, you didn't. Oh, but I did. I came back here, turned on the hall radio, and dialed the police wavelength. Then I went outside to Faraday's police car and used the microphone. Well, I'll tell you this. You certainly sounded like a ghost, all right. 
Enough to make Mrs. Worthington talk? Yes. Uh, Blackie, she said that this time she could really hear the ghost voice. And that before, she was responsible for making up all the ghost... Oh, look. Look, she's reviving. Uh, that's good. Um, Mrs. Worthington. Mrs. Worthington. You, you never really heard or saw a ghost in here before, did you? Oh, oh no. No, I, I didn't... You pretended to see one, and you pretended to be insane. Why? Uh, I can't tell you that. I can't. Or I'll be killed. Oh, just a minute. Faraday speaking. Faraday, this is Blackie. Like you say where you are. You're under arrest. Oh, no, Faraday. And I'm going to keep moving. But there's something up in my apartment that will stay where it is till you get there. What now? Same old thing, Faraday. A body. A body? Yes, but not the same old body. This one belongs to Ernest Cleland, and he's been murdered. You ought to know. You probably killed him. Where are you now, Blanky? I'm at Mrs. Worthington. All right, Blanky. You stay there. You understand? But what about the body? You can't arrest me until after you find Cleveland's body. I'll send Rollins up to see the body. I want to see you. No, Inspector Faraday. Blackie isn't here. Did you expect to meet him here, Inspector? Yes. Well, he'll probably be here in a few minutes. He usually keeps his word. Uh, Mrs. Worthington, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you about your nephew, Ernest Cleland. He's... He's dead. He's dead? Murdered. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry, of course, for him. But, well, it makes things a lot easier for me. Hmm? You see, there never have been any ghosts in this house, Inspector. And I... I was never out of my mind. I was pretending. You were? Why? Oh, well, now that Ernest is dead, I, I can tell you. I had cut him out of my will, and he threatened to kill me unless I changed my will and left a large sum of money to him. Oh, I see. So you pretended to be out of your mind because if you were declared insane, you couldn't legally change your will, huh? It was a clever stunt, wasn't it? Yeah, but it cost the life of Madeline Burns. I know. I had no idea that I would cause her. You didn't cause her death, Mrs. Worthington. What? Frankie. How do I look coming out from behind curtains, Inspector? You look better going. Behind bars. I'm not going behind bars, Faraday. And if you think Mrs. Worthington is responsible for a maid's death, you're wrong again. What caused Madeline's death was a guilty conscience. A guilty conscience? About what? What she and Ernest Cleland were plotting to do to Mrs. Worthington. They were going to kill her together. What? And when Mrs. What? Worthington told her about seeing a ghost, the maid's imagination ran away with her, and she thought she really saw ghosts herself. They were going to kill me. Blackie, how do you know Madeline and... and... Inspector, look what we found. Ernest Cleland. Oh, my goodness. Quick, push him will you? You mean he's not dead? Where'd you find him, Rollins? In Blackie's apartment, tied up like a birthday present. <laughs> I did that to him, Faraday. And told you he was dead, hoping that you'd tell Mrs. Worthing. Well, why did you want me to think he was dead? Well, when you wouldn't explain why you were afraid you'd be killed, I remembered what Ernest had said about being cut out of your will. So I grabbed Ernest and made him tell me about his deal with the maid. Tied him up and left him for the police. And is that all there is to this whole ghost business? That's all, Inspector. There are no such things as ghosts. What's that? Like it's ghosts. Ghosts, I tell you. <laughs> what are you laughing about? It's ghosts who've been surrounded by ghosts. <laughs> no, we're not, Inspector. Yes, yes, we are. I saw one of your cops in your police car when I came in. Huh? He probably fell asleep. The radio in here is still on, and right now he's snoring right into the police microphone. Uh, That's what that noise is. I hope. Oh. 